Problem 23. Each square in a 3x3 grid is randomly filled with one of the four gray and white tiles shown below on the right. What is the probability that the tiling will contain a large gray diamond in one of the smaller 2x2 grids? To understand this case, let's first understand how we consider it to be a correct solution. We can have a diamond right here. 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 Now, the reason why I say this is because we are going to very simply do probability, right? So understand this first. If I were to have a, a blank cube right here, what are the total number of possibilities for the entire thing? Well, there are a total of four possibilities that can, four possibilities that can go here because we have four tilings to choose from for this square. But then again, this square right here is no different. I also have four choices. Four choices, four choices, four choices, four choices, four choices, four choices, four choices. So that means that for every probability, we have a total of four to the nine in a denominator because there's a total of four to the nine possible squares with um, distinct arrangements because we have, you know, we can put random tiles in each one. With this understanding, let's consider what the numerator must be. Well, consider this case right here. If we were to have a diamond, then what are the only total possibilities that this cube can be? This cube right here. Well, this cube can only be one possibility. It has to be this, this looking tile right here. It has to be this tile. There's no other way. So, and if we want the diamond to form at this, this arrangement, then there's only one possibility for each of the four, four squares right here, because there's only one way to form a diamond, which is in this very specific arrangement right here. If that's the case, then we know that for the rest of them, it doesn't matter what they are. All that matters is that the four right here get predetermined. Other than that, what I don't care what else it must be, because I have already formed my diamond and I have matched the criteria. So in other words, what is the probability of this specific arrangement from happening? Well, that is four to the nine total possibilities with four to the fifth successes, right? Because it's four times four times four times one times one times four times four times one times one to get four to the fifth. And this makes sense because four to the fifth represents the number of ways that we can arrange the tiles that we don't need. And times one times one times one times one represents the arrangement that we need the tiles to exactly be. Now, by symmetry, I just wrote, I just flipped this around, right? So if I flipped it, then this is also four to the fifth over nine. And if I four or four to the nine. And if I were to do do it for this one, I just rotate this up. So that means this is four to the fifth over nine as well. And this is the same thing because they all are the same um, same pattern except different arrangement and different positions, but they still occupy the same probability. So therefore, we have a total of one, two, three, four. We have four total four to the fifths over four to the nines. So we simply do four times because we add it up because it's casework, right? Because it could be either this one or this one or this one or this one. And probability or statements represent. Um, addition, so it's four times four to the fifth over four to the nine, which is the same thing as adding this four times. So that is equal to four to the fifth over four to the eight, which is the same thing as one over four to the third, which is the same thing as one over sixty-four. So your final answer will be answer choice C.